For those looking to get started with assignments in Canvas, they can be used to assess student understanding of a learning target, gather important class information, help students feel connected to you as a teacher, and for you to give feedback. Anytime you create an assignment, you're creating something that requires action by the student. Whether they are turning in a document, responding with text or video, or even handing in a link. As a teacher, you will then have to enter a grade or give feedback, mark it as complete or incomplete. If you do not want students to turn something in or engage in a discussion, you would want to create a page instead, which is simply, again, you as a teacher sharing information with them. Let's look at how you can set up an assignment so both students, caseworkers, parents, everyone knows the information and what's expected of a student. What you're going to be doing is you're going to create uh, either right from the modules page into the module or unit that you want to create the assignment from, or again, you could do this from the assignments page and then later add it to a module. So I'm gonna click just right here and say that we wanna create from the pull down a new assignment, clicking on that and naming the assignment. So let's say this is our writing prompt that we want them to complete. This will create my placeholder that I will then click on and edit. Right now it says no content. We want to make sure that we have lots of information so that both students and parents are able to see what is going on in this assignment. So let me put some basic information in there for you. I put the learning target in here that they can respond to a writing prompt using complete sentences and punctuation. I also then created the writing prompt that they will respond to. I felt grown up when, and that's what they would then write about. Let's say I know I wanted a picture in here, so I wanted to again upload an image to put in here. All right, so I have a picture that I'm going to submit into here. Again, I can make this bigger or smaller. I then have the writing prompt and then the directions so they know how to submit this. Again, this is important for both students to understand their task at hand and then parents when they go into the assignment uh, that they can see what should happen if they need to assist their student. And just so you know, at the end of this course, you will be able to have resources where you can easily copy and paste the directions and include videos if needed for students so they know how to submit these assignments. We will have all of that available for you so you do not need to recreate the wheel of how to add these directions to your assignment. So as we scroll down, uh, we kind of have our information in there. We can decide how many points this assignment should be and based on your level and your setting, maybe at elementary it's zero points. And we know that this is maybe in a formative assignment group and we wanted to just mark this as complete or incomplete. They will then see a check or an X in the grade book area. Or if let's say this is uh, something that you wanted to measure on a one to four scale that you could then say again, what group it's in and then show it as points. It's really up to you in your setting as a high school teacher or middle school teacher. Uh, maybe the, this is a formative task and it's just out of one and you wanted it to put complete or incomplete because you want when it sinks to infinite campus for grades that they would uh, have one point if they completed it in zero points, even if it's a formative category that doesn't impact their grade. Um, as you scroll on down, you don't need to necessarily worry about this, but you have to pick what kind of submission type the assignment is. In this case, we're going to say that it's going to be an online submission, and then you have choices of what they can do. In this situation, we just want a text box to open for them, and they're going to then respond there. This also works if you want them to respond with a video response. Text entry will have those tools for them to do that. These other options are good for other assignments. Again, a website URL if they created a wee video project. If they're uploading maybe a picture, it would be a media recording or a file upload if again they're uploading something from their computer. Below I have how many submission attempts they can have. I can have unlimited or limited. In this case, I just want them to submit once. And then you can kind of go on. These are some advanced settings. Again, if you're elementary, you're probably not syncing this to infinite campus, but at the high school and middle school level, you would click this box. You can then add a due date when this should be completed by. 
The available from until is the part where if you don't want this to open until a certain time, you can put that from. And until means it's going to close off at a certain time. Some people might put the end of the semester or the dates that these things are kind of their last chance. So it's your call if you would like to put anything in those boxes. Otherwise, you can leave them blank. Once you hit save on your assignment, you will see what this looks like, right? So we have our learning target, our prompt, our directions. We see that everyone has this and is due by the 15th of October. If you're a middle school or high school course and you need to add a rubric for a standards-based course, that's where you can do this as well. And then you have set up the assignment. We see that it was published, so students have access to this. And then because we created this immediately in our modules, it is already there for us. Otherwise, we will find this assignment under the Assignments tab. This is where this lives. So there's our writing prompt due on that day. And this is what your assignment will look like from the student view. You see the same things that we did in our editor. For them, they're going to click the Submit button to answer the writing prompt. This will then, on the bottom of the page, have a box in which they can write in. And so they would type their answer to the writing prompt. Now, if you have younger grades or you would even just prefer a video response, one of the options, and you can, will have this for you to add to the directions, if they click the three dots, it will open up more tools. Students will then be able to click on the upload or record media and click on the record button and we'll have directions for parents to help with students with this, but then they can then respond verbally to the prompt that they might have or whatever the assignment may require. Now, there are a variety of ways where you can dive even deeper into Canvas assignments. And I just want to draw your attention to some of the things on the challenge page that you're about to go to. Now, first of all, if you look at the bottom of this page, you'll see that how you can create a Google Docs cloud assignment is another cool tool that you can use within assignments and also using other external tools like Pear Deck or Edpuzzle within Canvas. These are links to learn more about this and your tech coach is more than willing to help you with these tools as well.